Hey everybody, Alex Gazor, SteelersDepot.com. Uh, no, it's been a while since we've done a talk to the tape video on mine and uh, Steelers Depot's YouTube channel. Uh, we did some stuff leading up to the draft, just uh, some of me talking, my thoughts on the draft. But you know, since this is the off season and we have some time to kind of hang out and, and get ready for training camp, which is uh, about uh, two months away, a little less than two months away. Uh, maybe about, actually six weeks, I think. What is it? July 28th, I believe, is the first day they report. I uh, wanted to get back into a topic that I've mentioned on some, and I think some Steeler fans may have forgotten and, and have moved on uh, with the return of Martavis Bryant. But I want to talk about Sammy Coates today and what he still brings to this team. And although it's fair to recognize he needs a good camp, uh, I, I think assuming he has that, the asset he can still be. And, you know, I think that when you think about Sammy Coates in 2016, you think about the broken hand, you think about kind of how he disappeared for uh, the majority of the season. You think about some of the middle to late season drops. You think about the AFC title game with some plays he could have made and didn't. Clearly hampered and hindered by uh, the tendon finger injury that apparently is, is close, if not fully recovered from without the need of surgery. So that's good news there. Um, but we forget about the body of work he had the first four or five weeks of the season before the injury and how impressive he was as the playmaking vertical threat that the Steelers offense demands. So we did do a video on Coates for the Chiefs game in week four. I, I'm not going to go back to those plays today. I'll put a link in uh, the description and as well on Steelers Depot if you're watching on either or um, to the week four game we broke down Coates, kind of what I considered to be his breakout game, obviously right before the injury. Um, so we won't go back to those, but we'll go back to uh, some of the other games in the weeks before and then one clip from the Jets game in week five. Um, just basically to serve as a reminder that Coates can be, I think, a premier deep threat in the NFL. And I think we've kind of forgotten about that because, you know, it, he, he disappeared after the injury in week five and he really wasn't that guy. So I have a bunch of his plays uh, uh, queued up now. We'll run through them like uh, like we usually do here. This is going to come in uh, the opener uh, against Washington week one. Um, it's a, kind of a busted play. It's a bad snap by Pouncey. Ben has to go down and get it. And um, here's Coates at the top of the screen. And this is just a jump ball situation. And so Ben's just going to try to put it up. You know, corners played him uh, playing Coates well in a hip-to-hip -hip relationship. And now, granted, I think the corner ends up mistiming his jump slightly here, but Coates is strong at the catch point, tracks the football, and is able to make the play. So we'll get a look from the end zone angle as well. We'll go through these clips several times like we normally do. But, you know, Coates was definitely kind of a one-trick guy, although we're going to show a little bit extra of what he did and, and kind of uh, was able to build upon throughout the year. But, uh, you know, being a vertical threat in the Steelers' offense is never a bad thing. That's certainly not, I think, uh, a, a negative when talking about what a receiver can do. But at the catch point, corner jumps a little too early. Coates times his jump a lot better, able to finish the play, and uh, safety finally rides him out of bounds. But um, let me go back. This, I'm, on, I'm using the search function here, and it gets a little funny sometimes. But really nothing special there. Your coach is hip to hip, able to time his jump better, you know, make the catch. Uh, again, timing his jump well, and it's a 40-something yard gain. Safety can't get over in time. It's a good throw by Ben, too. It's a great play by Ben to be able to, uh, uh, you know, rebound from the bad snap by Pouncey and, uh, you know, f find his guy and, and really put that ball on the money. So we'll look at it one more time from the end zone point of view. But that's what Coates can be. Remember, Coates got hurt. I mean, after five weeks, Coates was leading the NFL in yards per catch at, I forget what the number was, 21 and change. Um, and he, he stayed there for a couple weeks till he fell out just because of, you know, qualifying. He didn't have enough catches to qualify on the list. Um, so that's his first uh, reception of the year. It's officially a 42-yard gain. We're, gonna, we're going to go to week two now against the Bengals. For a 44-yard gain, if uh, the search wants to cooperate. There we go. Third and nine, and we know the Steelers and Ben will air it out deep. Third and nine, you know, it doesn't really matter. He'll go for the home run ball in any single play, and that's certainly a threat. So here's Coates at the top of the screen against the corner. 
Oh, I'm sorry. That I, I always think that's Coates. I think that's uh, yeah, it's like D'Angelo Williams or something. I always lose the Coates down in the slot here, and this is something where we're seeing a little bit more uh, of Coates' development and it being advanced in his game. Um, what I don't like initially here, Coates is just running a curl, um, five yard curl. He is sitting down against man coverage and like to see him move and run away initially. But once he sees Ben come back to him, what Coates does well is now he now this turns into a scramble drill. Now the shorts go long and the longs go short. So Coates running his five yard curl against man coverage, go long and, and, and try to shake the defender and, and, and go somewhere else while staying in the quarterback's cone of, of vision. And so you're going to see Coates here just take off deep. He's able to track the football, get a little space at the top of the route with that speed that he has, and Ben's able to find him. So, you know, Coates settles. I'd like to see him moving a little bit there, trying to get open on the curl. But once he sees it's a clear scramble drill, he knows his scramble rules. And uh, he goes deep, gets separation, able to track the football, and, and, and Ben floats it right on in there for, a, again, I think it's a 42-yard gain or a 44-yard gain, whatever I said. We'll kind of see it again here. I think Coates might appear. Yeah, Ben starts a scramble drill. Ben's one of the best at it, of course. Just coats down in the corner. A little separation at the top, able to track the football. And it turns into a big play. So third and nine, looks like the play could be a bust. The Bengals have it covered well initially. It's Ben's ability to keep the play alive along with Coates, earning that football IQ and and, and, and getting open and, and following his scramble drill rules um, that I think is, you know, extra elements to his game he's adding. And there's a clip against the Chiefs. Um, where he shows similar in a scramble drill and is able to uh, keep the play alive and, and get a good gain out of it. So officially that goes down as a 44-yard gain uh, for Coates on third and nine, a busted play. Uh, you know, being able to make plays beyond the structure of the play, that's really important, and Coates showed that there. So this time that's definitely Coates at the top of the screen. 53-yard completion this time. And I really like, I'm going to let it run through uh, once. You guys can see it's that little skinny post, that old bang eight the Cowboys would run. It turns into a 53-yard game, but I really like this route by Coates. So we're going to kind of go through it a little bit slower now. Um, settling vertical, you know, off the ball, obviously it's a, it's a vertical route. Uh, but I, you know, shoulders and hips square. And it might be a little hard to tell on your screen. I'm not 100% sure. Um, but if you really watch closely here with Coates, as soon as the corner here, the left corner, turns his head around and, and really, you know, because Coates is committing to this just being a straight nine ball. And so once the corner gets his eyes around, assuming that this is just a straight vertical concept, Coates then begins his break to the post. It's just that subtle, uh, you know, move to the inside that's going to help create that separation at the top. And the corner with his eyes now completely back. Uh, he's back to the ball, isn't able to react in time and help close that gap. So as soon as the corner starts getting his head around, Coach is making his move on the post, and that's not a coincidence. You want to run him off with speed, sell vertical, and as soon as that corner starts to open up and um, you know get his, again, eyes and back to the ball and back to you, then you make your move, you make your break, and that's textbook stuff. I remember um, you know, when the Cowboys would run this, uh, the, the, the coaching point was, you know, you just keep going vertical until that corner fully turns and runs. It doesn't matter if it's five yards or 15 yards. You just keep vertical with your eyes downfield until that guy turns around fully. And then you make your break on the skinny post and you're going to win every single time. So I'll run this thing full for you guys. So there, there's a subtlety here in Coates's route that it looks like just a, you know, post, little, little post route and, you know, Coach is winning with his speed, but he's really winning with his timing and with his manipulation of his eyes and his body that gets that corner to, you know, have trouble getting back in phase. And with the kind of bracket coverage over here on AB with the corner um, close to the numbers on the far side, he can't rally to the middle of the field in time. And Coates has this one easy. So you see that little post as the corner's gotten his eyes around. Now he's late reacting to Coates moving on the post. And it just creates enough separation. You don't need much, especially when you have a deep ball quarterback like Ben and the safety not able to rally in time. Good ball placement. Coates, again, in stride, being able to find the football while maintaining his stride. He's not slowing down at all. Ben puts it right in the bucket, and it's a 53-yard gain. So this is one of my favorite routes to Coates ran of the entire year because it shows, obviously, his vertical nature, his speed, ability to track the football, maintaining speed. But his eye manipulation as well and his timing to create separation at the top of his route. Because regardless of 
you know, what kind of receiver you are or what kind of route you're running on a particular play. It's all about separation. You need to do with physical and, and mental tra- uh, traits and skills. And I think coach shows both on display. So um, we'll run through it one more time for you guys. So you're seeing to the start of his year, I think his three of his first four catches went for 40 plus yards. It was a 14 yarder, I think against Washington mixed in there. I think that was on third down too. So, um, you know, that's a you know, that's as good as it gets for someone who's deemed as a playmaker and a vertical threat. I look at the end zone angle, I don't think there's really anything to see here, but you see that separation there. Just just that's just enough to get there. And now the corner can't rally in time, he's gotta make the tackle, he can't go to try to play the pocket, and uh it's a huge play. Uh we'll move on now to week three. Uh against the Eagles. One of these plays I don't know if I wanna show. Might be this one. It's still a 40-yard gain, so you think now four of his first five are 40-plus yard, you know, gains. And like I said, you know, when he after week five, after he got hurt, he was still leading the NFL in yards per catch at 21 something, you know, per grab, which is a crazy figure. I think it's even better than what Martavis Bryant did his rookie year. Yeah, obviously, again, this is coach down the sideline now. It's you know, it's kind of a bracket coverage. I mean, he beats the corner, but the corner is playing trail technique, so the corner is deliberately playing underneath. And uh, I actually kind of credit Ben more than Coates on this one for holding the safety here and, uh, you know, being able to open that throw uh, along the sideline. I'll I'll show you Ben real quick, just being able to hold that safety to the middle of the field and then get his eyes to Coates and the safety can't get over in time. And, you know, he finds the area, we call it the honey hole, where you're going to find that soft spot in the defense. And typically, you know, for against a, a too high team, it's going to be down the sideline. Um, over top of the corner and, 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 you know, to the width of the safety down the sideline. So Coates does a nice job there, able to make the catch at the end. But honestly, I put that more on, on Ben than I do Coates. Um, we have the Chiefs game, which, again, I'll put, post a description to. And then uh, the last one we'll look at here is uh, against the Jets, uh, the big 72-yard touchdown that he had. Coates in motion, get in the corner with him, so likely sign a man coverage. That bunch looked to get the, the free release for Coates. And this is just all speed here. Now, the safety might not have played this well. It's not 100% sure on, on how the Jets were supposed to play it. Um, but you see the ability for Coates to stack the corner. And when we say stack the corner, you know, we're not in a hip-to-hip relationship. We're not running next to the corner. We're on top of him. Um, so the corner now has a lot tougher time to make the play. He has to go through you, through your body to make the play instead of being hip to hip. And it turns into a jump ball situation. You know, the cliche is 50, 50 ball jump ball. Well, you know, if you're not hip to hip, if you've stacked the corner, your odds have increased dramatically. And I'll, I'll run it here that, you know, right there, that's hip to hip, obviously. But then coach has that the speed to now stack the corner, get on top of him. And now the corner has a much tougher uh, time being able to try to play that and this is all speed here and again a great throw by Ben they get the, you know these are some money throws no doubt um, there was one against the Chiefs where it was a little underthrown it probably prevented a touchdown this time around though you know Ben knew he wanted to get this one on the money and he certainly did and uh, you know Coates has that that rare speed again nice job by Ben to look off the safety so you know credit for Ben that's part of what makes Ben such a great deep ball throw because his arm can be a little hit and miss sometimes but it's the eye manipulation here holding the safety to the middle of the field it's a great look at it and then you know knowing where he wants to go with the football and it's Coates winning his matchup beating the corner so we'll look at it one more time you know that's just speed I mean that's a nice job you know you have the bunch formation um, that'll allow you to get width when you come off the ball. You know, there's no risk of being jammed. You're going to have a free release. And uh, Coates, you know, with that fantastic speed, the ability to stack the corner and just run away from the whole defense, run away from the safety, run away from the corner, and it's a 72-yard touchdown. So, of course, with Martavis Bryant's return, he's going to be the Z receiver, uh, the, the number two receiver, uh, assuming the NFL reinstates him, which if Bryant does everything the right way, will happen. But, uh, you know, you don't want to forget about Coates and what he's able to bring and the Bryant-like qualities that he has. And, you know, if something happens to Bryant or, and this is an idea that hasn't been really talked about at all, um, we've talked about the four wide receiver sets. You know, myself and many others have mentioned it. But usually whenever people talk about that, they think, okay, the you know, we know A.B. Martavis Bryant, but then also Juju Smith-Schuster and Eli Rogers. Well, 
What about Sammy Coates in a four wide receiver set? What if you had A B Bryant Coates and then take your pick of Smith Schuster or Eli Rogers? Now you have three guys, you know, obviously A B Bryant and I think Coates that are legit playmakers, legitimate vertical threats for a defense to try to defend. And it's going to help open up things underneath as well when you have that threat of speed and, and, and playmaking ability um, that most defenses aren't going to be able to match. Because does a defense have three corners that can you know run four fours and stay stride for stride? Or I know AB doesn't run four four, but you know you have to have your best corner against you know Antonio Brown because of his ability to separate and get open. Um, so you have to have you know you have three you know really talented corners uh, physically to to match up against all those guys. Uh, I don't think a lot of teams do. It's really going to stress you, especially if you get, you know, middle of the season injury strike and guys are tired or whatever the case is. Um, and with the Steelers, you know, again, putting the emphasis so much on, you know, uh, the vertical attack and, and everybody that's a receiver has to be a playmaker and has to be a dynamic guy. Uh, we see it with, you know, AB and, and taking Bryant and Coase and Darius Hayward Bay and um, guys like that. So, you know, that that's what Coates um, brings to this roster. And I think if he has a good camp, then he's going to be able to continue that. So thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know your thoughts um, on Sammy Coates. Um, hopefully I'm able to, to show you some of this and, uh, you know, keep it tuned for Steelers Depot. And uh, we'll talk to you soon.